Well, hello there, folks. We're here for a very special two-in-one review for you. Let's get started. That's damn correct. Let's cut right to the chase. Let's not even play the guessing game. I have acquired a tin of Canadian Cope LC. That's damn correct. That's fucking correct, as a matter of fact. I'm so excited. I've always wanted to try a Canadian tin, and my friend Tom was very generous to send it to me, along with a few Nova Scotia trinkets, a coffee mug, a sticker, and a postcard. Thanks so much, Tom. I really appreciate it, and uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and get your stuff out to you very shortly. Just so you know. So yes, the Canadian Cope Long Cut. Isn't that so cool? That's so cool. But what are we going to do today? This is a very special two-in-one review, as I said in the intro. What we're going to be doing is first reviewing American Cope LC, and then we're going to review Canadian Cope LC, and at the end of the video, we're going to compare and contrast and talk about what's the same and what's different about them. So let's get started with American Cope LC. If you just want the Canadian Cope LC review, I'll put an annotation down here or something so you can just skip right to it. But for my dedicated viewers, let's get started. So of course, the presentation. Just all around beautiful. It just looks classic. It looks old school. It just it looks manly too. It just looks great. I have always loved this tin. Looks wonderful. The side label here. And most importantly, you have the fiberboard bottom. Oh, you gotta love the fiberboard bottom. It makes a big difference. But we'll get to that. Um, our date here isn't the best, but it's okay. I'm surprised you usually get good dates on the stuff around here. But it's all right. I'm not gonna argue it. Um, January 5th, 2014. But that's okay. That's alright. It's not like it expires right on the date. No. That's a sell-by, not used by necessarily, so it's okay. Ah! Tin construction, obviously. Metal lid, fiberboard bottom. And, uh, let's take a whiff of the scent. Hey, hey. So, of course, Cope LC, we all know it as the most natural dip out there. It's just original tobacco. And um, it has a nice mild but pure scent. It's not artificial. It just smells like pure tobacco, and it smells very good. And really, that's all that needs to be said about that. So let's pack a leaf. Alrighty, so we don't have too, too much left here. But we have enough, enough for a pinch, of course. So let's pack a loop. I mean lip, sorry. <laughs> loop. <laughs> Alright, let's go. Hey, hey, little decent sized lip, not huge, not small, just decent, kind of medium if you ask me. Pack it in the right today. I just put a little extra something in there. Hey, hey. And there we go, for now. So now I'm not going to take this lip out and go right to the Canadian Cope LC. I'm going to take like a little half hour break maybe, let the taste go away so it doesn't screw it up. So it tastes like it smells, man. It's the most natural dip out there. This is just natural. It's just original tobacco. It ain't, you know, it ain't all that artificial shit. It's just pure. And it has a nice mellow tobacco flavor. Um, it's really just perfect in the flavor department. Comparison, obviously, it tastes the same pretty much as Cope Snuff. Uh, in terms of other brands or anything, though, there's really nothing that tastes quite like it. It's on its own. Cut! Obviously with Copenhagen, long cut typically means mid cut. Or their long cut is more of a mid cut. So it's more of a mid cut um, than a long cut. Just like all the other Copenhagens. Well, except for Cope. Well, except for Cope Wintergreen, Cope Mint, and Cope Natural. It's like Cope Black, Cope Southern. You know, all that stuff. Mid cut. Oh yes, texture. It's not too abrasive in the lift, but it's not soft. It's kind of in the middle. It's moderately rough. I guess. That's what I'm trying to say. Just moderately. Not bad. Packability. Um, some people have trouble with Copenhagen because of the mid-cut. Personally, I've never had any trouble with it myself. 
Well, maybe a little bit when I first started dipping, but um, or first got into Copenhagen. But once you master it, mid cuts and, and especially fine cuts. If you master fine cuts and then go to mid cuts, it's going to be easy as fuck. Um, ever since I mastered it years ago, I'm, I've never had any trouble, no floaters or anything. So it's very simple, very easy for me. It packs together fine. Burn. Um, typically, I won't get a burn out of most Copenhagens, um, excluding wintergreen. Um, it's typically not too bad. I mean, like, say I've been dipping Stoker's wintergreen all fucking day and my lips raw, and then I throw in a Cope LC. Then it'll burn because my, you know, I have gator lip by then. But Cope LC on its own, not typically. Nicotine is, a uh, um, it's, it's in the medium. It's, I, I define Copenhagen to be in the higher medium. It's more than Skull, um, not quite as much as Grizzly. Um, more than Stoker's as well. So it's in the higher medium, because Skull is in the lower. Uh, Stoker's is in the lower medium, Copenhagen's in the higher medium, and then Grizzly. I think we all know about Grizzly. <laughs> Don't really have to say much about that one. Spit. This tin isn't, uh, the best date, but typically you get, um, a, a moderate amount of spit, because it's a natural dip. There's no more additives. There's nothing that really makes you spit a lot. So, and people say, eh, it's dry. No, it's not. It's just that's how naturals are, or at least originals, rather. Um... Yeah, that's just that's just how they are. Um, it, but it gives you a moderate amount of spit, and it's usually pretty dark. Sometimes it'll be a little bit lighter if it's um, if it's kind of not the best date in the world. So yeah, last ability. It lasts a decent amount of time. Probably anywhere. It depends how big a lip you pack. I mean, I only have a medium sized in. Um, so it probably will only last a half hour if you pack a big one or put in a filler or whatever. Maybe you'll get 45 minutes out of it. It lasts a good amount of time. Not a ton, but a good amount of time. Aftertaste. It's not really that bad. When you take it out, you just have a little bit of the natural flavor lingering around. Just drink some soda. Drink some whatever the fuck. Put in a piece of gum. Whatever. And we will be doing shoutouts, number of subscribers, all that stuff at the very end of the video. So I'm going to skip that and we're going to get right to the rating of this. As you know, Cope LC is one of my favorite dips. I do now these days like... Cope's enough a little bit better than Cope LC, but nonetheless, this is still a great dip, and I like it still the same as I always have. I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10. This stuff is truly great. Obviously, try it. Bottom line, would I dip it again? A fucking course. Do I really have to answer that? This stuff rules. And now, moving on. All right, here we are back again. Now we're going to be reviewing the Canadian Copenhagen Long Cut. We're here. It's about an hour and a half later. Uh, I've since had a couple pork chops and just been sitting here for the most part. And now it's time to review the actual Canadian Copenhagen long cut. Oh yes. So let's take a look at the presentation. Obviously this is going to be a big part of it. Let's take a look. So yes, obviously much different and very cool. So this itself is probably going to take a couple minutes to go through. So obviously you have the front, um, I always thought that it was just a metal lid with a sticker put on, but no, it's indeed printed onto the metal, and uh, you have the Cope LC in the middle, and this is not actually a warning label, this just tells you what the carcinogens in it are, it actually gives you the amounts. Toxic constituents per gram, 0.11 milligrams of nitrosamine, salmon, sammies, 0.0003 milligrams of lead, that's promising and point, uh, 24.2 milligrams of nicotine. Believe it or not, in Canada, Skull has more nicotine than Copenhagen. Isn't that a fucking sacrilege? Not here in the US, but up there it is. And then it has all that stuff in French at the bottom, and now we look at the side. Um, it has obviously the warning label in French, and then the warning label in English. This product is highly addictive. Not just addictive, highly addictive. Oh no, I need to quit now. <laughs> then you have the tax. Uh, stamp here which is very hard to crack through and yes this tin is cracked I wanted to save it and crack it on video but I was on Skype yesterday with Ben's and Logan and Noah and Hunter and Eric and all you fuckers made me crack it and try it out I'm just messing with you guys but yeah so it is pre-cracked but uh, you know that's not my fault and then on the side label the only indication of what the dip actually is is this little tiny thing here that says Copenhagen long cut oh and then on the bottom, of course, in Canada, no fiberboard bottom, plastic bottom, which is a big thing. But they don't tell you, <clears throat> they don't tell you the best buy or sell by. They give you um, the week of the year that it was made. 
Um, so it's 41 slash 13. So that would be as far as I know, I think early to mid October. And like I said, that, that's the date it was packed. And my buddy Tom who sent it to me said that that's an extremely good date for a Canadian tin of dip. Um, so yeah. So we just took a few minutes on the presentation alone. So obviously tin construction, metal lid, which seems a little bit thicker than the other Copenhagen's, but it could be because it's flat or something. So metal lid, plastic bottom. Why don't they have the fiberboard bottom? We already went through the date and now it's time to open her up and take a whiff of the scent. <laughs> okay, so it's, it's, uh, it's very bold and um, it smells a bit artificial. Definitely way more artificial than regular Cope LC, and it's, it smells more like a natural. It almost has like a, a Grizzly 1900 Red Seal Natural thing going on. Not necessarily a bad scent, but it is a bit artificial. So let's finally pack her up and pack a lip. Let's get cracking, let's get packing. These days I typically do five packs, that's all you need. You don't have to pack it for fucking 20 minutes. Do it in five packs, will you? Okay, so I have dipped through a majority of this. As you can tell, hey. <laughs> so first of all, um, it's very dark. It's a bit dark, um, and it's a little bit clumpy, believe it or not. Uh, you know, what they do with Canadian tins is they typically take all the shitty U.S. leftovers and put them in a Canadian tin, send it to Canada, where they charge you 25 bucks for a tin. That's pretty much what they do. So, and it doesn't have the fiberboard bottom, so we should notice some differences. So let's pack a lid of what's remaining. Okay, let's go now. Hey, check that shit out. Again, we'll pack it in the right. Alright, just a little filler. Hey, line it up, of course. So now the flavor. Very, very interesting. Um, of course, the fiberboard bottom does make a difference, and the fact that this is made differently. It's made with the shitty leftovers, of course. So instead of tasting like Cope LC, has a bolder, stronger taste. It's way more artificial. Um, it's very comparable to Grizzly 1900 and Red Seal Natural, which Red Seal Natural would make sense because it's made, you know, it's made by the same company as Copenhagen, of course, U.S. Smokeless Tobacco. So that would make sense. So yes, I would compare it to both Grizzly 1900 and Red Seal Natural. Very interesting. Very interesting, really. It's cut is a, you know, typical mid-cut. It's not any different, really. Um, it's pretty much the same kind of cut that you get down here in the U.S. So no real difference there. Texture, um, it seems a little bit rougher than U.S. Cope LC, which would make sense. Like I said, again, they use a shitty leftover, so it's, it's a little bit more abrasive. Um, it's not quite as in the medium as it's a little bit more. Um, just a little bit rough, not too bad, though. Packs together, by and large, the same. Um, for me, I'm used to mid cuts and you know some fine cuts, and so for me it packs together just fine. It's no real problem. You grab your pinch, you throw it in, no real floaters or anything. It's pretty good. No burn. I don't really get many burns anymore unless it's something like wintergreen, which uh, I dip a lot. Stoker's wintergreen. And I don't really get a burn from these things. I still get a little bit of a burn from Cope Snuff, but typically naturals I don't get much of a burn from anymore, so no burn. Uh, nicotine. I'm not feeling anything, I don't normally anyways, but, you know, the fact that in Canada, Skull has more nicotine than Copenhagen? That's a fucking travesty. So I'm not surprised that I don't feel anything, especially with this. Hear it bouncing around in there? Doesn't sound right having Cope LC bounce and rub against a plastic bottom. But yes, you can hear it. You can also hear my mud jug. <laughs> Moderately full, it's about halfway. Spit. Um, you get a decent amount of spit with this, actually. It's not quite as dry, it doesn't seem like. Uh, you get a decent amount of spit, and it's a fairly dark spit. Um, so yeah, you get a decent amount of that. Lastability. Um, it, it lasts a good amount of time, actually. It's, it's, uh, you'd think it'd be in shitty, ch shitty tobacco that they use to make it, that it would be not too good, but it lasts a good amount of time. Probably, by and large, the same, 30 minutes to 45 minutes, maybe. About that, it's not bad. Aftertaste. It does taste a little bit like dirty asshole when you take it out. Not that I know what dirty asshole tastes like. But it does taste a little bit nasty when you take it out. It leaves that art artificial taste. And, uh, you know, in your mouth. So, you know, like I said, put a piece of gum in, drink something. I don't give a fuck what you do. Just do something. 
Let's do something. Not too, too many shout-outs today. Yes, we're going to get it out of the way before we compare and contrast. Obviously, we have Yankee Dipper, Afro Dipper, uh, Chub Fucka, and Jake's Reviews Full. And we also have Rocky Top Dipper, Tennessee Dipper, and Southern Dippers 97. Those are your shout-outs. Check them all out. And now it's time for the rating of this one. Um, it's not nearly as bad as I thought it'd be. I was honestly expecting it to be a little bit shitty. Not quite as good, but I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. It's actually not that bad. I actually like it, surprisingly. Would I ever pay 25 bucks for a tin of this? No, but I like it. I do like it. It's pretty good. It tastes more like a natural. So, comparing and contrasting. American Cope Long Cut with Canadian Cope Long Cut. They are quite different, okay? Obviously, the presentation, we don't need to describe that. Very different in that department. Tin construction, obviously, this is metal lid plastic bottom. This is metal lid fiberboard bottom. So that's a big difference. And it does make a difference in the taste. I'll tell you that right now. The dates are different, obviously. Smell-wise, this smells like a, you know, it smells like a mellow, original, natural tobacco scent. And this smells a little more artificial, but it's not like an original tobacco. It's more like a natural, like Grizzly 1900 or Red Seal Natural. So, you know, there's a big difference there. Flavor-wise, again, this is a more mellow original tobacco flavor. It tastes very natural. And this tastes like a natural, a little bit artificial. The cut is by and large the same. The texture is pretty much the same. This is a little bit more abrasive, but not too, too much. Packability is the same. Burns the same. Um, this seems to have a little bit less nicotine than this one, just a little bit. Uh, spit, um, you get a little bit more spit with the Canadian Cope LC. They seem to last the same amount of time, but this doesn't leave a bad aftertaste. This one leaves quite a bad aftertaste. It tastes, you know, it leaves that artificial taste in there. It tastes like, again, dirty asshole, which I've never tasted. Um, and this gets a 10 out of 10, and this gets an 8 out of 10. So overall, I like American Cope LC better still, but I still really like this. It's not bad, but it tastes more like a natural dip as opposed to original. So it was very interesting to try it. I'm so glad that I can say I finally got to have a uh, Canadian dip, and I now have the tin to save as a souvenir. I save all my tins, by the way. Um, so thanks again, Tom. It's been very interesting. I hope you enjoyed this double-length video. It's been a lot of fun for me. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Take care.